Tatsuya was born into the Yatsuba family, one of the strongest mage clans in Japan. His family only cared about creating strong mages, and for that, while his mother, the clan leader, was still pregnant, she prayed with all her desire for Tatsuya to become a superhuman-like mage. His birth was quickly celebrated, however, they found out that he couldn't use magic and turned him into an outcast, being bullied and ignored by everyone. No matter how much he cried or screamed, nobody would pay attention to him, neither his own mother, the person who desired him the most. To hide that he was disowned and keep a good public face, his mother assigned him as his sister's bodyguard. Since then, Tatsuya never cried again, not because he didn't wish to, but because all the pain and suffering made him lose all his emotions. The three arrive at their villa, where they are greeted by Hanami, one of the family servants. The three head inside while the hard labor of carrying the luggage is left for Tatsuya. Miyuki decides to go for a walk and asks her mother to get permission. Her mother tells her to take Tatsuya with her, something Miyuki is less than pleased about, but agrees to it nonetheless. Miyuki goes for her walk while Tatsuya keeps a respectable distance behind. Miyuki vents internally about Tatsuya being her guardian when he is weaker than her, making it pointless. As she internally laments about his situation, Miyuki is suddenly stopped by Tatsuya, but the man she nearly walked into still intentionally bumps into her. The three off-duty soldiers take a threatening stance to intimidate the siblings, but Tatsuya stands in front of Miyuki. He calmly tells the soldiers to leave, with his voice and eyes insinuating that they aren't a threat. Tatsuya is the one who's dangerous. This antagonizes the three and things quickly escalate with the soldier throwing a punch infused with magic which Tatsuya blocks. Miyuki cannot believe her eyes, thinking he used magic to block it, but she knows he cannot use magic. Tatsuya gives another warning, but the soldier attacks anyway. Tatsuya easily counters him with a punch that knocks him down. Tatsuya then leads Miyuki away while the man is on the floor. As the pair walk hand in hand, Miyuki is left stunned by Tatsuya's display of unexpected combat skill. The pair return to the villa. Hanami immediately notices Miyuki is rattled. Upon hearing the details, Hanami compliments Tatsuya, but he dismisses it as his duty, leaving Miyuki confused, as she doesn't know what he means by that. Mia compliments him on knowing his place. Mia is unwell, so Miyuki is heading to a party to greet one of the branch leaders of the family in her stead. Miyuki is averse to going and Hanami gives her pointers on hiding her feelings for the sake of her future public image. As the siblings head out to the party, Hanami laments Tatsuya's fate when there is no reason for him to be a bodyguard when he isn't an artificially enhanced mage like she herself is. Miyuki arrives at the party with Tatsuya. She formally greets Mitsugu, the branch leader, who then leads her to see her cousins, whilst Tatsuya, as her escort, takes his position by the wall but they quickly rush to Tatsuya after noticing him. As he talks to the kids, Miyuki notices a slim smile on Tatsuya's face. She starts to feel jealous, as she has never seen him smile at him, despite not even caring about him. Mitsugu quickly comes to the rescue of Tatsuya from the excited kids, but in reality, he's just trying to make the kids avoid him. Miyuki reflects on the internal situation of the family and how they are forcing everyone to keep their distance from Tatsuya. To them, Tatsuya is a mere bodyguard, an expendable instrument who must sacrifice himself to protect his sister. Because of the family, she never loved him as a brother, and because of his apathetic personality, she thinks he also never loved her, as he's forced to stay by her side instead of being free. Tatsuya diffuses the situation by asking for permission to patrol the grounds. Seeing Tatsuya's resolve to play his role as a bodyguard, Miyuki resolves to do her duty to represent her mother. On the next day, the family members decide to spend some leisure time aboard their yacht, because they swim in cash, not in the ocean. They're all taking photos, and Hanami tells the siblings to take a picture. But of course, Tatsuya cannot do it without asking permission from his mother. She silently agrees to it, and Miyuki surprisingly blushes while smiling. Yet, as they take the shot, the yacht takes evasive action as it is attacked by a submarine. Miyuki and Hanami pull out their CAD, the device that makes them cast magic, to defend the yacht. But when she looks at Tatsuya, she notices his hands are empty. She thinks to herself how useless he is, he is still considered a mage, but he doesn't even have a device. Suddenly, they see two torpedo shadows in the water and are shocked, as none of their magic spells can defend them from that attack. Out of nowhere, Tatsuya simply points his hand at the torpedoes and uses a spell to dismantle them. Miyuki cannot believe her eyes, she doesn't understand what happened. She is confused by that kind of magic. Tatsuya doesn't have a CAD. He shouldn't be able to use magic. Furthermore, he just used an advanced type of magic in a second. 
From that moment on, she started to feel her heartbeat pulsing in her chest. She thinks about who really her older brother is and how she can get closer to him. That evening, the villa is visited by Kazama, the captain from the nearby military base, who is taking a statement about the incident. The siblings escort him out as he leaves, and there they see the soldier whom Tatsuya knocked down a few days ago. Realizing Tatsuya is the boy from the incident, Kazama makes the soldier apologize. But Tatsuya could only speak and accept the apology after Miyuki nodded her head in approval. With his interest piqued, Kazama invites Tatsuya to visit his unit base. On the next day, Tatsuya's mother plans to attend an event for women only and tells Tatsuya to visit the base, as it may be a good opportunity to learn something. Miyuki asks if she can go as well, saying she needs to understand her bodyguard's skill level. Their mother agrees but tells them they must behave like siblings in public, mentioning that Tatsuya should use Miyuki's name instead of referring to her as Miss. At the base, they are greeted by Sanada who leads them to where the troops are training to use basic magic without a device under Kazama's watchful eye. The training moves to fight sparing matches, and Kazama invites Tatsuya to join. Tatsuya agrees and his first opponent is a national boxing champion. The match begins with the boxer launching a flurry of punches, but Tatsuya calmly dodges and strikes once, making his opponent fall. Next is a karate black belt and Kazama tells him to go all out against a 13-year-old. As the soldier attacks, Sanada comments on how Tatsuya is treating the fight as if it was real combat, keeping a distance in case the soldier has concealed weapons. The match ends with Tatsuya countering an attack and flipping the soldier to the floor. After watching a kid beating up some grown-up soldiers, Kazama feels like their honor is at stake and requests a final match. Joseph, the guy Tatsuya beat on the first day, volunteers, stating he would like a chance to prove himself. Kazama attests to Joseph's skill level and so Tatsuya agrees, though Miyuki is anxious about it. The match begins, but this time, the soldier needs to fight using magic. Miyuki objects but Tatsuya scolds her, pointing out that using magic is a must for a magician. Tatsuya uses his agility to get some distance and uses his own magic to stun Joseph and take him down, leaving everyone shocked. Literally the same feeling when you get wrecked by a 13-year-old Fortnite player. But what makes them even more impressed is that Tatsuya used a magic called Gram Demolition, an S-ranked spell that destroys the enemy magic spells. Kazama then invites the siblings to have tea to discuss the technique Tatsuya just used whilst Sanada invites him to look at the CADs he's working on. The CADs catch Tatsuya's interest. A few days later, Miyuki notices Tatsuya has been working all day and night on his CADs in his room, without understanding why he's doing it. Suddenly an alarm goes off as air raid sirens sound across the region. An announcement is then given. A patrol boat was attacked off the coast and the island has come under fire from a missile attack. The announcer then advises people to evacuate. Tatsuya then arrives, to inform them that Kazama has offered them shelter at the base. At that moment, the phone rings. Hanami informs Mia that it is her sister calling. They discuss the situation, with her sister advising them to shelter at the base and to remove Tatsuya's limiter. Mia agrees and tells Tatsuya to ask Kazama for transportation. Arriving at the base, Joseph guides them to a break room inside to wait with another family until the shelter is ready. Mia and Hanami think that something seems off, but the four wait until they hear gunshots. Tatsuya tries to use his magic to scout the area, but the room is shielded, so he cannot see what is happening outside the room. Mia orders Tatsuya to check on what is going on outside, but he voices his fear that something might happen while is out and that Miyuki. His mother goes rampage, angered that he called his sister by her name as if he was an equal to her. She angrily tells him to not forget he's a mere bodyguard, forcing him to apologize. To make sure he follows her orders, his mother uses magic to force him to comply. Outside, Tatsuya sees a gunfight between the base's personnel and enemy troops supported by some traitors. Inside, a soldier named Kinju arrives at the room with three colleagues and promises the civilians he will guide them out of the shelter. Hanami tells him that one of them has stepped out to check the situation, and Tatsuya's mother adds that the soldiers can take the other family first. Hanami thinks that Tatsuya's mother is showing concern for her son for the first time in her life, but the mother simply tells that she cannot trust those guys. Before anything else can happen, Joseph arrives and calls out to Kinju who opens fire without warning. Hamani puts up a barrier to defend Mia and Miyuki but one of the traitors uses a magic spell that suppresses others' magic, leaving all three unable to act. Joseph and Kinju argue about the betrayal and when Joseph's words hit a nerve, the suppression spell weakens enough for Miyuki to act, killing the one who is suppressing everyone's magic. However, this infuriates Kinju, 
who guns the three down. In moments, Tetsuya arrives by making a hole in the walls and uses the cat he was working on to disintegrate all Traitor 4 soldiers. Seeing Miyuki lifeless in a pool of blood, Tatsuya rushes over and gets desperate. He calls for her name while putting his hand on her chest. But she doesn't reply, she's dead. He desperately shouts he won't let her die, and casts a unique magic spell. In her unconscious mind, Miyuki is sitting in the middle of a cold ruined city and hears Tatsuya calling out for her name. She thinks that he's sad for seeing her die, and regrets the way she's been awfully treating him since he was born. She wishes she could have a chance to apologize, but now is too late, and she collapses. Suddenly, a magic wave appears upon her and starts healing her, while rebuilding her body before she was shot. She opens her eyes and realizes it's Tatsuya's magic, thinking how powerful and wonderful her brother is. When she's completely revived, Tatsuya immediately hugs her in relief, she is safe. She hugs him back, and when he gets up to save the rest, she doesn't want him to get away from her. But when she looks at her mother, she sees all the holes in her body. She calls him brother for the first sincere time, and he completely heals and revives her and Hanami. While the others wake up, their mother is still unconscious, forcing the base doctor to check her condition. Kazama apologizes to Tatsuya for the traitor's actions, but Tatsuya asks for an explanation. Kazama tells the other family was the target, and that Tatsuya's family was taken as collateral. Kazama then explains that the enemy controls the waters near the island and about the land troops on the village shoreline. Understanding the situation, Tatsuya then asks them to shelter his family in their most secure location and asks for armor and equipment so he can go for the enemy. Kazama asks why and Tatsuya explains it is revenge for killing his sister. Kazama states he will not allow the killing of non-combatants and anyone who surrenders. But Tatsuya, with a cold look in his eyes, assures he won't even allow the enemy enough time to surrender. Kazama agrees to have Tatsuya deploy with them. Tatsuya leaves but Miyuki grabs into him asking him not to go. Tatsuya states he must because they hurt the only thing important to him. Miyuki notices the strange phrasing and Tatsuya tells her that she's old enough and that their mother should explain it to her. He then assures Miyuki he will return because due to his power, there isn't anyone that can defeat him. The family watches Tatsuya and the military unit fight against the invaders. Anami states that the fight is a living nightmare. Tatsuya is disintegrating the enemy soldiers with his magic. But to make it even worse, when his companions are shot down, he simply revives them. Miyuki then asks her mother for an explanation for what her brother said. Her mother scolds her for calling him her brother but then explains Tatsuya was born as a defective magician. For the Tatsuya clan, true magic is all about modifying information and getting a result, in this case, a specific spell. But Tatsuya can only destroy and restore information at a monstrous level, which has several locks to prevent him from getting revenge and destroying the family. But his brain still cannot change magic information. Their mother made several experiments on him to change his brain with magic and force it to change magic information, making him lose all his emotions, except for one, his brotherly love toward Miyuki. But since all experimentations failed, their mother decided to use his defective power and strong bond toward Miyuki and forced him to become her bodyguard. Hearing this upsets Miyuki, making her cry. She then turns back to the screen and ponders how she can ever repay Tatsuya for everything he has done for her. As the battle comes to a close, six ships detach from the enemy fleet and flee away. The soldiers want to intercept their escape, but the base commander tells the soldiers to back away. They don't really understand what's happening because only Sonata, Kazama, and Tatsuya are staying behind. He is holding up a huge sniper CAD that he developed. Noticing the CAD, Hanami asks for permission to deploy and support Tatsuya. The mother agrees, seeming to know what he is planning. Hanami arrives and activates her shields focusing on defense from the incoming bombardment so that Tatsuya can focus on attacking. This buys Tatsuya the time he needs, allowing him to activate his magic spell, Material Burst, obliterating the fleet and creating a huge tsunami while they retreat. Once they reach safety, Tatsuya watches as Hanami dies because she exhausted all her magic power to shield him. However, she reveals to be content to have chosen the time she fulfilled her final duty which allowed her to die as a person and not as a man-made tool, something that Tatsuya should learn from. And with those last words, she closed her eyes. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.